All right. So being cool here is with As Strange as Angels. How you doing, man? Good, man. How are you, brother? Good, good. Hey, man, I just listened to that new single of yours, The Curse, and it was awesome, dude. Thanks, man. Thanks, dude. I mean, it's, um, you know, it's our, our latest single. We've been killing it on radio. Luckily, people have been really responding to it. We've had a real good run with our past two singles. Um, with Never Broken, you know, really opening us up to that Sirius XM Octane audience and, you know, just kind of giving me the, the itch to write that heavier stuff and get into that, man. It's been a great run. It's been super fun. And like, I think the song uh, is super fun. I mean, what artists would say, hey, we wrote this, you know, new stuff and we don't really like it. You know what I mean? I feel, I feel like, I mean, it's not like, oh, we're in love with what we do. But to me, I'm like, hey, there's so much music out there now. And there's so many ways to get it that I feel like I have a responsibility. If I can't really bring something like fresh to the table, even if it's horrible, then maybe I shouldn't be doing it because I'm just clogging up the space for someone else to do it. So when people can respond and like it and dig it and see something special there, it's really awesome. So thanks, man. You know, I'm waiting for the first interview I do and they say, hey, uh, yeah, it's a piece of shit, but we had to put something out. <laughs> <laughs> right? Hey, man, at least it'd be keeping it real. They're like, well, you know, I mean, we were doing well. We just needed to keep it going, right? Um, that would actually be hysterical. <laughs> <laughs> So how crazy Oddly enough, that would probably make more news than anything else, right? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> how crazy it put music out right now during the pandemic and not being able to tour the back end. You know, it has been um it's been a blessing and a curse in different ways. Blessing in that uh it really forced us to just hunker down and like keep writing and write some of the best stuff that I mean, I know for me, I pushed to myself because it was like there's literally nothing else I could do but write music and record it and I'm lucky to have my own studio and um, j just get that done but it was a real bummer at the same time because we had had a single a first our debut single had charted on billboard and really like made a huge impact for us our first two and we walked into again you know uh, that that Sirius XM Octane audience and it just caught seemingly like it, it, it caught fire man I mean it was off we were, we were off to the races so to speak right uh, festival offers coming in things just you know it, it was like clicking man it was like a dream I didn't think that it, it, it would just be rolling and all of a sudden it came to a grinding halt so for us we didn't really we don't know what we're missing yet because we only got to really get out and do a handful of shows like being on tour with Red um, but we didn't also get a chance to um, experience the fruits of our labors so to speak you know what I mean so it's like we don't know what we're missing, but it's also kind of like it leaves that feeling of like, man, what would these shows and these audiences and things have been like being that we were we were catching some traction, you know, so it's, you know, it, it's I'm hoping that, you know, that they hang on <laughs> until we can really get back on the road again and be able to experience what that's all about, you know, so it's been a trip, man. See, that's one thing I've discussed with other artists is that, you know, every year there's there's somebody that's going to come out and they're going to have these hit songs and shit. And this pandemic is totally going to screw that band over because they should have been here already because of, you know, the the, the momentum from touring and playing the festivals and stuff like you said. It's got to be a sting for sure. It, it's a sting, man. But it, in some ways, I'm also noticing that, like, it's changed a lot of listener listening habits. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, my, myself included, you know, I'm like, we're seeing a lot more traction in the streams. I mean, we're, we're cracking millions on, you know, something like Spotify. So it's like, I don't know that we would have done that before, as crazy as that sounds. Um, when, when you're thinking you're on tour and you're building a fan base, yeah, you totally should. But at the same time, when this is the only thing you can get from an artist, so to speak, it's like we've noticed, you know, an uptick in like different areas that we didn't think that it's. That, that you would you know um so so it's 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 interesting you know but it, it hasn't flatlined which is amazing but it's just interesting to see the different places that it's coming from i mean we've done the live stream stuff which we've really embraced uh, quite a bit because i also have you know down my own studio we have our own like rehearsal stage and stuff so we've been able to really work that to our advantage just do a bunch of free shows you know and try to to, to get that out there and connect with people and doing the live streams. And um, there's a really cool thing called the Music Network on Apple TV and Roku. Right. We've done some live stuff on there that's been super fun, man, to the point where I'm like, I might be 
hosting some some shows for them just because I'm so a, a music fan myself and I'm a, such a huge supporter of that. So it's created a lot of different things and it, you know it's forcing a lot of us to just get creative, man. And I think in its own weird way, maybe it was something that we needed because we were all kind of getting complacent with just the way that you do it, you know? And so now you're like, you better think of something else if you want to survive, you know? So it's, it's interesting, you know, and there's a lot of good music that's coming out of it. You know, it just be noticed is maybe a little bit more difficult now because <laughs> everyone's doing it. You know, everyone's got no other choice, but just put out a ton of, you know, premature records, full records. And it's like in the big boys, I mean, like one of my favorite bands, Bring Me the Horizon. I, it's like they're unstoppable, but it's just like the little guys like us were like, <laughs> you don't even have a chance now, man, but it's still awesome. I mean, you know, you guys definitely ain't slowing down. I mean, you, you keep on charting on Billboard, but tell me what was greater than not only having the numbers up there, but looking at the newest poll there and, and seeing you're above ACDC, man. You know what? That was a real trip. Um, there was one charting. I think where we sat in the above ACDC, right under the Foo Fighters, which I'm like, here, I want some Foo Fighter problems. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm like, if I'm sitting up there, I'm like, it can't be all that bad. And that's what I mean. You know, it has in a very weird way where some of the big boys like haven't been going out there and like releasing stuff because they're holding off to see what touring season is going to look like. It's also, you know, for those of us that were ready, kind of created a, an opening for you know uh, us to to break through you know what i mean for a lot of like you know baby bands and younger bands to have a chance to like go right down the middle you know what i mean it, to use a football analogy you know the the defense wasn't expecting it right and so the little you know line the, the little linebacker shot through and made the touchdown you're like i didn't think that dude was gonna do it so it, it's just, it's been interesting you know because we haven't had um i mean and they're still coming out. i mean there's Corey taylor who just slams everybody bring to the horizon all that big kind of stuff um but at the same time it, it, i think we have a tiny tiny bit more of a chance than before so that's why i'm saying it's you know it, it's been a blessing in its own weird way just not being able to play is like your big thing because that's where you can really go out play shows connect with people really actually see it tangibly right now it's like a mystery you know you're like i don't know we may actually have real fans and like we don't know <laughs> Well, you know, what's interesting is that, like, right now, I think the fans out there are truly the ones who are blessed by everything that's going on. I mean, right. right. Now, for music, it's, that's all that's coming out right now is new music. I mean, there's no yeah. entertainment, there's no TV shows, there's no new movies, you know, there's nothing. But throughout this whole year, the one constant has been at least the songs, you know? Yeah, totally. And that's what I'm saying. I feel like, you know, it's in a weird way, it's really just reinvented the wheel for so many for consumers and the way they listen for artists and the way they play for i mean a music fan in general you know there's just so much coming at you you know um that it's been like super cool and it is again it's kind of exciting because i'm like all right if people love music the way i love music it's kind of exciting to think about what is like the first round of tours and live shows really going to be like you know what i mean they might be crazy off the hook dude just because it's like ah, we're all able to like go out and do it you know what i mean yeah hopefully people put their uh their phones down and actually enjoy being in the moment for once you know yeah right there, there you go man maybe they'll remember like dude remember we didn't do shows for like a year and a half maybe it's like time we just kind of drop the phone in the bucket for a minute right just connect that would be great wow. yeah man i mean that's why we went to shows when i was growing up dude that's why i was in the pit with Pantera getting beat up at 12 years old. <laughs> exactly, man. It was my rite of passage, bro. <laughs> These days don't know a good uh, punch in the eye during a set to- uh, For real, it's, it's good for you. Oh man, I got the wind knocked out of me. I remember sitting on top of like my friend's, my little girlfriend's sister's car because she was the one that took us. And I was just sitting in the parking lot like, <sighs> I just got my ass beat by a grown ass man in the pit and I survived. I love it. <laughs> Never turned back, man. <laughs> exactly. I can remember being uh, about 11 years old myself and I live in Buffalo. There's a venue that used to be called the Scrapyard and Cannibal, oh, yeah. Corpse, Cannibal Corpse is from Buffalo. 
and I was at a Cannibal Corp show, man, and everyone was just jumping on stage and literally doing stage dives. And it was like, I got to give that a shot, man. So during a corp show, I dove off and crowd right It was just like, from that on, I was like, I'm in this metal scene for the rest of my life. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Oh, yeah, dude. So you get it. So I'm hoping we all kind of have that same renewed, like, appreciation for, you know, just just a live show and even the, a renewed appreciation appreciation for artists man like in music i feel like in some ways it gets diminished and you're like the from the scene like all the way around from the supporters of it like you to the people that create it we all create content and i'm like you gotta support that man like because we're the ones doing it when there's nothing to be had from it we just love it right 100%. like like you're, you're you're talking with me today because it's like you just love helping artists and love getting the word out and that's amazing man and like there needs to be more people like you in the world so thank you on that note but it's like we do you know we just we just all love it we want to share it right now the fact that everyone loves it though fans need to realize that this is a career for you this is how you make income you know what i mean they got to start actually buying music again you know i mean everyone expects it right yeah you know what it is man i mean i really I really screwed myself in a corner, so to speak. <laughs> I got I got so far along because I started really early, you know, a developmental deal with Capitol Records and I must have been like 17 years old, right? It's like, I started so young with it that it was like, I made so much headway that, I, that now that I'm in it, I'm like, I don't think that I could really, I think about it sometimes, turn back and like do something else. Like, this is crazy, man. Like, it really is like, this is the way that like, I feed my son, like whether it's, and keep a roof over our heads, whether it's writing music for people, producing bands, you know, hel helping other bands do their thing and develop them and do my own stuff. I mean, everything I do all the way around is music, right? right. So you're like, wow. You, so one way or another, I'm like, if you're not supporting me, you're like, that's cool. You should support this band that I produced because that helps as well in the big picture, right? And that helps those bands and those artists. And like, yeah, I really just got myself into a corner on that one. <laughs> I can't get out of it. I remember one day I was even like, I really love I was cutting my son's hair. And I was like, you know, I've done hair on tour for band members on the tour bus and shaving and undercuts and dyeing and right. I'm like, maybe I should just go be like a barber or something. Like, and I looked at like how much it costs. <laughs> like right. um, the, the, the schooling that you have to go back to. I was like, who has this time eight in the morning till eight at night? I'm like, I'm a single dad with a seven-year-old kid man i was like never mind back to the music we go right <laughs> or not that i was giving up but you know what i'm saying it's just like you get so far in that you're like dude, you don't really it, i told someone once sometimes you don't choose music there's some of us like it chooses you mm -hmm. and even when you want to like scramble away from it you're like i dude i can't get it out of my bones man and i feel like you're probably the same way in your love for it you know it's like maybe i don't want to be crazy collecting everything and love everything but like i can't imagine not doing it right <laughs> you know it's so funny that you said that because i i've said before in interviews that during this time i've never realized how many bands that you think would have money actually had to go out and get nine to five jobs to try and support themselves because there's not being the chance to tour yeah what i think is What's going to happen? And, you know, I don't know how what the plan is. They say hopefully this year touring, but definitely next. If you haven't toured for two years and you went and got yourself a nine to five job and you're used to bringing home that and you're happy surviving off that, are you going to go back on the road? You know what I mean? I mean, I, I don't know. So yeah. Go away. Yeah. That's an interesting way to look at that because I think a lot of us too, like going back to the sports analogy, right? You're like, we just want that one more touchdown, right? We want it. We want to make the 300 club in baseball or something, right? Um, and you want to go out on your own terms and then you're willing to let go, right? And then once you do kind of let go, <laughs> you know, I've seen a lot of friends do that, you know, this past you know year and a half. It's like, once they were just like, well, I guess music's just not in the cards for me. And they have become content to it. Where And they've been in bands that are doing, you know, great. And they're like, you know, dude, once I let it go, I was able to let it go. I don't know that I want to jump back into that risky game again, right? And that goes back to what I'm saying, though. Some of us, we just, it chooses you. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, probably the smart way to go, but I just can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? 
Now, now, with that being said, in more and more states starting to open up, is there any plans for you to doing any uh, touring this year, or what, what's going on with that? Yeah, I mean, well, we live live in Texas, so I mean, oh. for uh, yeah, I'm in Dallas, so for us, it was like, I believe this past week, our governor just ripped off the band aid and was like, "Y'all figure it out," you know. Here we go. So it's been interesting to see um, things just open up and like shows just literally it seemed like overnight we're like getting booked happening it was like nothing had happened everyone's just right back into like making it happen which is super great um but i think you know we if, you know my team and i were probably still a little more cautious than that like we want to see what's really going to come out of it first because at the same time it's like i know i don't want to jump the gun too soon because it would be a real super bummer to get in it and then find out you have to pull back again Right. You know, so I'd kind of almost really like, hey, you know what, since we switched our plan and we've been doing, you know, thankfully so great at radio, let's just go ahead and continue wrapping up this record and figure out how we're going to release that. And that's going to take us April, May. And maybe by that point when we're in summertime, we'll have a better idea of what's going on. I mean, obviously, we'd love to play. We've been chomping at the bit to play. I'm so just crazy interested to see how it has affected and created a fan base for us that it's like what's out there for us to unwrap man like this is super awesome right um but i do i i i, I think we'd go really crazy if we were like hey we got some tours psych we went ahead and pulled that back again you know it's like oh, man you know the, the, more slap it's like just just let's just wait and see what's popping you know here in New York, Texas, New York, man, makes me quite envious. I'm, I'm in New York, man. We're still living off a curfew. Here, so, are you serious? Yeah, we got 11 o'clock. Wow. How does that feel? It sucks. <laughs> it literally sucks. You know, I mean, two weeks ago, they just opened up movie theaters for 20% capacity. Uh, venues are at 20% capacity, but everything closes at 11 o'clock bars, restaurants, concert venues, things like that. So, you plan yeah. anything fun forget about it yeah dude i mean it's i mean it's it's actually to be honest so like on the capacity thing um i have this friend that actually burned this band it was super funny they were um complaining about something being only 20 percent capacity or somewhat i forget where and she had commented on their facebook like i don't know why you guys are worried about 20 percent capacity because even at 100 you only have like three percent capacity <laughs> Right. And I was like, what a bird, but that was jacked up. <laughs> but um, as far as things being open, man, it's legit in the wild west out here, you know, because it's like, I mean, it literally feels like nothing happened. I mean, everyone's wearing their masks and doing their thing, which is really cool. I mean, like it just to see like, okay, well, we all didn't go nuts, you know, because I don't know, I don't feel I'm intelligent enough to get on the political side. Uh, I definitely I'm like, hey, call me a sheep. Bah. Like, I don't want to find out the hard way. Right. Yep. So I'm just like, whatever, man. You know what? I have really bad allergies and I'm a singer. And I noticed I haven't been sick in a year wearing my mask and allergies don't mess with me. So for me, I'm kind of like. I think I might take on like they would do in Japan when we'd go over there. You're like, people wear masks anyways. <laughs> right. I'm like, maybe they're on to something because I'm not catching. It's it's amazing. My voice has been so much happier my migraines have been happier so for me i'm like plus we look like ninjas my little boy and i go out with our hoodies and our masks i'm like we look kind of dope um <laughs> it's just fun but um it is it is a weird feeling when you kind of like look at it and you're like wow man I'm like just acting like nothing ever happened you know so it's crazy so that's the part of us that i feel like you know i don't want to see that have to roll back again so i guess i'll do my part by just slowly getting into it you know and i feel bad you know like people like you man you can't get out and do something so <laughs> you, you know what's crazy is when when touring starts and they're trying to do routing and stuff it's going to be tough to figure out where to go because even though some states do have that limited capacity i don't think people realize that let's say it's 20 percent, okay that 20 percent is not 20 percent of the people who can come in there that includes the band that includes the security includes the bartenders the, yeah the, the roadies everything you know what i mean so yeah there's a hundred yeah i don't i don't you you need you need those bigger capacities especially for the bigger tours you know what i mean where there is a good chunk of people when you've got a bus routed tour 
with three acts and a couple bands, I mean, that that eats up 50 people right there, right? Yeah, you know what I mean? Exactly. You know, I mean, that's a good percentage of what's going on there, for sure. Right, dude, that's nuts. I, I, I didn't even think about that. I was like, oh, I'm thinking 20% capacity minus the essentials. But I guess you're like, well, every tour package has variables. Maybe one yeah. national and then a couple locals, maybe they're all three touring bands you know what i mean when when each with separate crews or something you're like wow or does the band have to play and then get out to make room for the pet right i mean yeah. that's kind of interesting wow that's nuts i didn't think about that yeah man it's uh, it's gonna be a real pain in the ass once uh things start moving up a little bit so liabilities insurance liabilities because mm -hmm. think about I, I was trying to explain that to someone too when they were like i don't know why these stadium tours just can't do it we could all just space out and i'm like yeah, but do you know how many people, like, let's say that Motley Crue, Def Leppard, Poison Stadium Tour are responsible for? And they're dragging all those people through, like, different scenarios every night, just regularly. You know what I mean? Riggers, like, all the stuff they've got to do, people they've got to go and set up days before. I'm talking, like, dude, this is, I don't think y'all realize sometimes, like, we're not at that level, but... Right some of those bigger tours i'm like that's you're you've got a lot of people's lives in your hands mm -hmm. and you've got to like factor that in and there's some people that you know i was hearing at one point and insurance companies were going to have a real tough time wanting to insure certain things and back certain things up and i'm like wow this is crazy like how are we ever going to actually crawl out of that right it almost kind of feels like being a little band a little baby band you maybe have better luck than anything else right <laughs> See, in, in my mind, like in an ideal world, I think if those bigger shows that are playing the arenas and the stadiums, it, it has to be a limited capacity, do more than one show, you know, do it two, three, four days in a row to, to get everyone oh, in there. Oh, wow. But what band is going to play four days in a row for the same amount they'd make playing for one? You know what I mean? They're not getting paid more. It's only going to equal out. They're doing that many more shows. Hmm. Yeah, that is true, man. That's going to be wicked because I was looking at a map actually yesterday and I was just just kind of curious. You know, I was like, hmm, I wonder what this would look like because someone like, um, I think Adelita's Way had like announced some dates that were going to go on the road. And I'd look at, look at a map and I was like, of states that were open that you could do things. And it was literally like, wow, you just throw a dart and that's what routing would look like. Well, you can go here. You can drive through here, you can stop here for a certain percent, then shoot down here, and then, wow, that's kind of it, right? It's still like so, so yeah. spotty, man. It's crazy. It is for sure. You know, it, it's scary. I mean, I hope we all get out of it because there's so many like great people like in the music industry, man, that have just taken a hit. I oh. mean, a huge, huge hit, dude. Like, and 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 I mean, all of this, and it's nobody's fault. But I mean, to even just get back on their feet, like they don't even have the opportunity. It's like it really sucks, man. Like, there's people that I mean, have worked for us, and you know, techs and crews and things that you're like, dude, they don't even have a shot at getting back in some of that for a while until until we can. They can't either, right? So it's like, it's a bummer, man. It's a real bummer you know, to see my, you know, friends go through this stuff. I wish there was something I could do, you know? Now, now going forward, do you think things might ever go back to normal? Or like, what I'm saying is you're used to doing singles right now, you know, a, a bomb single, wait a couple of weeks, you know, six, eight, another single before dropping an album. Do you think that's going to be the new standard? Yeah, I totally do. Um, I feel like um, it's just maybe you know, for, for a lot of bands, you know, ourselves included, a smart way to, to handle the, the, the scene now, you know, because as for us, we're still growing, right? So it's like, if we drop the 10 song album, I'm like, how many people are going to really pay attention to that entire record? And there could be something in there that maybe could have helped catapult the band. But because, you know, I listen to records, you know, the new Seven Dust comes out, I'm like, and I will listen to that sucker on repeat a bazillion times front to back don't even touch it right? right i just go that's me i love music right um but there's you know that uh, an audience that just d doesn't you know you're, you're on a playlist you skip around you do things which i also do so i'm not saying anything, anyone does anything wrong 
but for us i'm like i don't know like what our fan base looks like that they'd want to consume it that way that it might be better and better focus for us to kind of like be doing like what bring me the horizon is doing right drop a single in a video boom cool next one single in a video and i feel like you maybe keep everyone a little more you know into what you're doing then the album's kind of old news after six months and you're like wow bummer you know what i mean so it's an interesting way i think it's a cost effective way marketing wise as well and i don't feel at least for us like we're putting all our eggs like in one basket because once we drop that then you're like now we've been recording it like an album and it's just like well do we want to release it do we want to do two eps do we want to do a bunch of singles do we want to have like a really strong song that carries the ep and then ep number two i mean i don't know that's something to like to think about you know but i definitely see it as, as a new model you know especially in the rock world you know just kind of like it seems to be the smarter way for less established bands what, what do you think about that one thing for sure i think it keeps the fans hungry you know it, it gives yeah a taste of what you have to offer and it's just like definitely like wow i can't wait to get my hands on more so that'll definitely boost up your social media because they're going to be checking back in your page saying i wonder when the next song can come up with yeah it. you know i've seen a cool little trend that reminds me of like the maxi single remember those <laughs> when you get like a cassette single dude and you'd have the b-side um or i'm seeing bands drop a like a single for radio or just like the video even if they're not like going for radio it's just like this is our next big thing or a single we want to push and we dropped a video for it but when you go to like spotify or itunes you'll notice that it's like a two song thing they've got a second song that they released along with it and i'm like oh that's kind of cool because that's like a little extra you know you go look up whatever your favorite band is that dropped a new single and you're like oh put out two new songs that's cool um so that's something i'd be into as well just because it seems kind of fun <laughs> but you mentioned that you're adapting you're doing live shows you're doing the stuff for apple tv and roku uh you do stuff like you do Twitch and shit like that too, or no? No, man. You know what? Being being a single parent with a seven year old, I don't know that I could commit to something like that because I don't know what's gonna happen in the next thirty minutes. Sometimes, you know what I mean? You're like, dude, if I make it to the end of the day, I'm like, and, and my little boy is awesome. I'm so blessed that he's just such a wonderful dude, a wonderful little dude. But um by that it's just like i have so much fun because sometimes i'm even like i got so wrapped up in beyblading and xbox with him that i was like mm, that opportunity or that drive to feel like you want to do something like kind of pass by i don't know what i would do on twitch or something i, I i'm kind of jealous of the artists that do figure a lot of this out because i'm like man i don't i talk a lot but i don't know that i have anything interesting to say and i really actually don't want anyone to know a lot about me so I just kind of want to play my music and be like, eh, which is so anti-frontman, right? You think I'd want to be like, everyone look, but I really want to just lurk in the shadows. Like if we could do this interview like this right now, right. I'd be like way pumped. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, I, I dig that, man. You know, I mean, I, I grew up in a time where, you know, there was some mystery for uh, for a band. You, you know, there wasn't. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to know what you ate for lunch, man. You know, I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm sure. You know, right? Thank you for saying that. Thank you, because part of our approach, um, to be perfectly honest, when we first started was like, you know what? I said that exact thing in my drama. I was like, oh, everyone is trying to get in people's faces. What if we kind of run the marathon versus the sprint and catch it in the back, in the back end, right? You know what I mean? Where you're like, I was so in love with Guns N' Roses and Metallica and Pantera and whatever I could get my hands on, like Rip Magazine, Metal Edge, like Hit Parader, like it didn't matter. Whatever I could get at the 7-Eleven, even if it was like an eight month old issue, right? <laughs> it's like just came in, but I was like, oh, oh my God, like I'm already reading about something that already happened. It made you really like, to me, invest in those bands right you were like dude i am so die hard i cannot wait until i can get my hands on this and now when in, in an age where we can like just get it in seconds boop, 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 that's super cool but it's also like man are we taking for granted some of this you know what i mean and so we've all oh, that's kind of been our thing um and you can tell by the way we do like our, our media and stuff i mean we're there 
but not we'll pop in but not we kind of let like what's happening with the music try to do more of the talking than anything else without trying to be like really super artsy missing it in action like a tool right you're like it just you know what i want you to dig a little because i feel like even if we have less of an audience that we could have i want to maintain an audience that like is really going to be invested because i want to invest the same way you know what i mean i don't want to feel like i'm doing something because i have to go through the motions i'm like hey man maybe we only got five thousand fans but you know what those five thousand really love us so i'm going to put my ass into this next track right because i know where it's going to the people that it's going to and they're really going to dig it not just to keep getting you know my numbers up and you got to play the game and there's that whole thing but I, i'm glad that you said that because you're like one of the first people to be like Finally, he gets what I'm saying, man. Right. Sure. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm glad to see that you're letting the music speak for itself. You know what I mean? You're, you're not out there throwing yourself down my throat and fucking whatever nonsense is out there today. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, and it's hard. And, you know, there's, I, 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 I think there's interesting things to see on like artists. And I think it's really cool when they're super random for mm -hmm. me. Like, I'm like, oh, I'm going to, I love seeing that. You know, like if I saw a video on Axl Rose just, hanging out at the park or something i would probably watch it like five thousand times so i'm like what does axel look like when he just walks right you miss that you know what i mean like i miss that as a fan i'm like i want to know like i don't want that fourth wall <laughs> like yeah. broken down for me i'm like leave it the way it is dude like i'm cool <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah that's cool man so what's next for you um to finish the record um, we're literally recording stopped right now just to um, do this, which I'm super pumped on, man. Thank you so much to you because I dig the site too. Um, finish it up, wrap it up, and then see what kind of the summer holds. You know what I mean? Um, we'd really love, I'm, I'm sure we're going to end up playing somewhere. Lucky for us being, you know, like a baby band that we are jumping around for four or five dates for some shows. Like that's huge for us. You know, that might be a super pain. For somebody else so we're gonna fly the flag for that you know for us i'm like we appreciate whatever we get if there's something cool we can do and it makes sense like we're absolutely gonna go out there and do it um and do it well and enjoy it and just enjoy that moment in the sun man and have fun with it um so we hope to see you all out there man i'd love to be back in new york bro definitely man you know i love me some buffalo bro jim kelly dude that was my boy back in the day <laughs> football dude buffalo bills i was like I'm all about it. <laughs> now, for those that are watching, they want to follow up. They want to check out the music videos. They want to see the next single. Hopefully, maybe catch a tour date. Where do they go? What do they do? Man, the fastest way is as strange as angels.com because that will just take you anywhere you want to go. But um, find us on this, all the socials at, at as strange as angels, you know, Facebook, Instagram. The only one that's a super pain is Twitter. Uh, someone's got the handle as strange as angels, and they haven't touched it since like 2010. And I'm like, oh my God, like, can I pay this guy like 20 bucks to like delete his account? Like I've been trying to find him. I'm like, bro, it's just, it's not even that I want it. Cause it's like our name. It's just driving my OCD crazy that when I talk about it, I can't just say on all the socials at as strange as angels. Cause I'm already weird about the socials as it is. Right. Mm -hmm. And now I'm like, you got to make me talk about it a little more. <laughs> I'm like, make this easy for me. <laughs> Like I said, I love the music. I can't wait to see what Thank you, man. from you. And uh, hopefully one day, you know, get backstage, get, crack open a beer and uh, shoot the shit some more. Yeah, man, we can do it hanging out at Jurassic Park. There you go, buddy. <laughs> I'm always going to remember. I'm like, really? <laughs> see? See? Me, bro. I love the fourth wall. I still want to hang on to hope. <laughs> Santa <laughs> is real in my world, bro. There you go. <laughs> sure. All right, buddy. Take care of yourself. Hey, you too, man. Thanks, bro. I appreciate it.